All right. Well, good morning, everyone. It looks like we have reached the top of the hour. My name is Alex Smith. I am a senior CSM with our global sales enablement and training department here at Mind Manager. And our focus today is what is new with Mind Manager version 24. I'm very excited about this release. It has a lot to cover. So uh, in the interest of time, uh, feel free to ask questions throughout the webinar. If for any reason I cannot get to one of your questions, I certainly do apologize. Uh, there is, again, a lot of new things to cover in this, this particular build, and I am very excited to talk to you about it. So let's jump right into the webinar info, and we'll kind of talk about the higher level kind of buckets that we <laughs> segmented all of the features into. Now, so as you can see on our agenda, we'll talk about the user interface improvements that we did. Well, then dive into the new features for project management and the collaboration experience around Mind Manager. Then we'll talk about the things that we've enhanced, uh, such as our features as well as our integrations. And then a brand new way to even conceptualize Mind Manager is the customization that you can do using the App Studio Experience or Mind Manager apps, as it's called now. So this will be about 60 minutes uh, from top to bottom. That will include, of course, uh, time at the end for Q&A. So feel free to ask questions throughout the session today. If for any reason I don't get to it on that particular slide, I will do another review at the end of the webinar of all of the questions. And if I need to, I will jump back into one of those subsets. Uh, keep in mind that there will be a recording of all of the info that we're sharing with you, as well as the actual maps themselves. So that way, if you do have anything that you want to test out, once you download version 24 on your own machine, you will have every example that I'll present. You'll be able to kind of retrace all of my steps and see exactly how that is going to benefit you in the long run. And I do want to point this out because it was um, a big item from our last webinar. This is focused on our Windows release. I want to be very, very clear about that. So if you are a Mac user and things do appear different or you're not finding the exact same functionality on that platform, I do certainly apologize. I don't want to send any mixed messages. This is a Windows-based experience that we're going to be talking about today. Now, of course, if you do have questions, there is the chat panel. Let's go ahead and open the thumbnail image here making sure everybody knows how to use it. If you're having any trouble with your audio settings, please do double check here. But again, if you have questions, feel free to chime in at any time. And of course, as we do with all of our live events, we would love to hear from you. We have a five question survey, and this obviously goes a long way. That's exactly how we got here today with the new release for version 24. We listen to our audience. We try our best to implement the ideas that you have in a timely manner. And this is something that has been requested for a while as far as some of these functionalities that you'll see today. So I'm excited to present a lot of what we're covering. And again, if you have any follow-up, we would love to hear from you and you never know, it might make it into a future release. And then of course, for after the webinar, if there are questions or concerns that you have or things that you're trying to accomplish and you need some one-on-one -on -one assistance, I am here to help you. So feel free to reach out to me, alex.smith at mindmanager.com more than happy to set up a call with any of you, especially because you come with great ideas. And obviously we're gonna be talking about a lot of new material today. So sometimes it can be a little hard to wrap your head around, but again, I'm here to support you and your success within my manager. Uh, and you know what, before I forget, like I did on the previous webinar, um, I'm going to use to navigate the new feature for Power Bookmarks. And uh, we will be talking about this later on in our discussion, but in my previous webinar, I used the traditional scroller, so I, I told myself I wasn't going to do that again. And here we are. This time, we are flipping through everything using Power Bookmark. So another excellent addition to the software that we will talk about closer to the end of our, our segment. But uh, of course, I want to make sure that I'm leveraging it throughout today's discussion. So user face improvements, uh, user interface improvements is where we're going to be starting our discussion today. So you may have seen as I started to click through some of the topics on the previous slides that there was a new toolbar that was starting to appear as I was doing that. Well, it's a great way to start utilizing all of those key elements of my manager. We're talking about things like updating the topics, uh, working on the topic shape, the fill colors, the different layouts that you can use, even including things like icons, tags, and 
also accessing the task info environment. So you can see I have this here. It's going to add a start date and a due date. And of course, if I don't need that, I can actually go into the full-fledged task info panel, simply uncheck the boxes, and it's back to normal. But it's a great way to gain access to a lot of those key functions that you use in My Manager on a regular basis, but right there at your fingertips. And one question that we did get during our last webinar was, oh, oh it looks like we have one on this already. <laughs> Excellent question, George. Uh, I have not seen any way to customize the floating toolbar. I will take that back to our product team and see if that's going to be coming perhaps in a dot release at some point later on in the year. But uh, personally, I have not been able to, you know, quote unquote, customize the items that are in this ribbon. I love the idea. So please do make sure that you add it to the survey. Uh, so in our previous uh, webinar, one of the questions did come up about how to hide this element if you find that it's not helpful or maybe you're giving a presentation and it might be in the way simply come over to the three dots here and remove the show floating toolbar option so as long as you turn that off you will act just like it did for version 23 keep that in mind <clears throat> the next addition that we'll talk about here on this particular slide is the topic type selection now that's a new addition to the actual ribbon that we're just talking about. So if I select this example topic here, you can see that I have the topic type selection. Now, when I trigger it, keep in mind that this is already being utilized as a hierarchy based diagram. That's why it's bordered in the blue color here. And as a result, it is going to gray out the other alternative options, flowchart topic, as well as sticky note. And of course, if we simply delete any of the, the children topics or the subtopics, if you will, that is when we gain access to the additional adjustments. So now we can submit that it should be a flowchart topic. And as immediately as I hover over one of our anchor points, you can see that I get the shape wheel. So I can now predefine the next shape in the series that I'm trying to build as far as a flowchart or a concept map. Or I can go back in, trigger it, and change it into a sticky note. You'll also see that the toolbar will adjust its position relative to the topic. So it will always make sure that you have enough screen real estate to see the actual topic itself. Uh, the goal here is not to overlay the topic with the toolbar, but rather uh, make sure you have access to both. The other item that I want to cover here is the sticky note experience. Now this has been updated uh, for version 24 specifically because of the brainstorming experience that we've heard back from our users on. So again, I can't speak to you enough about the importance of your feedback during those surveys. So to represent this example, I'm actually gonna open our template. So let's go to file and new, and we'll open the whiteboarding template from here. Go ahead and create the map. So you can see by default, my manager is going to make everything yellow. Well, on the formatting ribbon now, uh, excuse me, on the home ribbon we have the sticky note option and here we can place uh, our color by using the drop down here and now anytime i use that double click function the sticky note color will be the exact same keep in mind that i can make that adjustment as many times as i need to and all of that material is going to be useful for things like your swot analysis your brainstorming sessions uh, if you have some kind of a business model uh, canvas that you're designing things like that uh, this is exactly where you're going to start to be able to leverage this particular functionality so that does it for our first slide as far as some of the initial user interface uh, enhancements let's go ahead and take a look at some of these other questions again george that was a great question that you asked early on about the floating toolbar let's see what else we have to cover All right, so Kevin, you are absolutely spot on. There are keystrokes that can be used to add topics and subtopics and, and things of that nature. Let's go ahead and go back and close that down. So I'll, I'll go back to this topic here and switch it back into a hierarchy-based diagram since you mentioned the term subtopic. So keep in mind that again, subtopics are relative to the hierarchy-based diagrams, not so much the sticky notes, the flow charting concepts, because this is the only format of mind manager that can be collapsed in that kind of hierarchy fashion if you will so of course we do have the anchor points on the topics right so if we needed to this is a very quick way to add content you can see if i place another subtopic below everything will shift upward etc let's go ahead and delete all of these out now 
if that's still a little too slow or cumbersome for you, there are some hotkeys that you can use. So if I hold control on my keyboard and I press the enter button, I'm going to get a subtopic. So if I do that again, I will literally get another subtopic from the level that I'm at. If I let go of control and I just hit the enter key, I'm going to stay at the topic level that I am. And then of course, delete will uh, delete things in a reverse order. So just keep that in mind. When you're using My Manager, there are several ways to accomplish the exact same goal. It just depends on what you are most comfortable with. And obviously, I do definitely prefer the hotkeys. I think those are very quick and easy to use. But specifically, now let's go ahead and delete this item here. Uh, specifically for your flowchart topics, I think that using the mouse is probably one of the best ways because you do gain access to the shape wheel so that if I did need to position this topic off to the side and I wanted to have a specific look and feel, I could do just that. So let's see if we have any questions here. And if not, we'll carry on. Great question. So actually, yes, you can edit these lines themselves. So first and foremost, you can see that I've clicked here on the label, and this is a way to insert a call out, kind of identifying what that line means between the two topics. And then of course, if you did want to format the line, you would actually right click on it itself, trigger that format, format option. And let's say that I wanted a right angle on this line. I could then make that adjustment and apply it here. Maybe I want to update the line color things like that, and maybe even the line pattern and the line weight. So all of those adjustments I can make pretty quickly. And then of course the anchor points themselves are how you reposition the line as it relates to the two different topics. So if I didn't like that, I could simply have it be joined from the edge here, then connect both of those. Now, keep in mind as well, if I delete the topic that it's connected to, it will remove the line because it has no other anchor point to uh, connect with. So another great question. Let's see if we have any others that we can cover here. Okay, so when creating a map and trying to use it in a slide capacity, there are multiple ways. So obviously this is a little off topic from what we're covering now, but I do find it interesting because we are going to talk about the Power Bookmarks experience in a moment. So again, I wanna make sure that as I just said about using the topics and bringing the hotkeys or the mouse into play, there are different ways to accomplish similar goals in my manager and slides is one of those entities as well. So for example, let's say that I wanted to create a slide based on this topic, but I didn't actually need all of the other topics or the images in the background. I could simply right click this item, choose a create slide from the context menu, and then it will actually create a slide based on that particular topic. Now, this is different than what I was doing just a moment ago during my presentation. This is the actual slide deck mode. So if we go to file and new, this is exactly what we are using to present um, that particular concept, right? The reason that I'm doing the presentation today in the traditional Mind Manager canvas, but using Power Bookmarks, is because I'll need to reference the ribbon, I'll need to pull open things in our side panels, and the presentation mode experience in Slide Deck is meant to go full screen and kind of remove all of the other uh, portions of the content that I would need to provide the presentation today. So that's why I've made that selection based on my needs as a presenter, versus somebody that might just be showing the status of a project or the process the diagram that they built, for example. I need to access the ribbons, the toolbars, and everything else, so I have decided to keep it in the traditional canvas. Excellent question, and uh, thank you very much. And I'm sorry, who was that? Christian, thank you so much for the question. Excellent. So uh, in the interest of time, I'm going to jump back in. Maybe we will get some of these others answered uh, as we move through some of the other material. So carrying on with user interface improvements, we've also included things like topic author details on all of your maps now. So that way you can identify who has created an idea or a topic, who's modified it last, uh, and when, 
Was it in the past seven days, in the past 30 minutes? Uh, so you can start to look at the material in a different way, kind of keep everyone honest and identify exactly where you need to be spending your time and who's working on what. There's also been an addition to the task info environment that makes it easier to identify when things are going to be due, and that is our countdown timer. And then lastly, the power filter task pane is a whirlwind of change from our previous experience when you had to access the power filter ribbon from a set of pop-up windows that would kind of separate you from your data. And we'll talk about that as we walk through our next example. So let's go ahead and jump in here. All right, perfect. So you can see I'm in a map. This is actually the layout tools uh, kind of help guide for the My Manager app uh, called Layout Tools. We'll talk about that again in the latter part of our discussion today. But within this, you can see that there are several items. Some have been colored, some have different icons, some have notes, some, some are finished, some are yet to be completed. And of course, there is also a boundary. Well, if I wanted to identify exactly what's going on in this map, I could filter based on the power filter option right here on the side panel. And it allows me to do a multi-select. So that way, if I wanted to see things with a white fill color that were um, you know, in a specific folder for installs or things like that, I could do a multi-selection. Uh, I could also do a filter just to see what was edited or last modified by myself, which would be this item because I checked it off as I actually installed the App Studio and wanted to make sure it was all working as a part of this demonstration. And so these are uh, the new sets of features for filtering the material and then identifying again who has done what within the document. This is something that has been asked about for probably two or three years at this point, but we had to make sure that we got it right. So again, one of, I, I know I keep saying this, but I really do want to encourage you to give your feedback during those surveys because again, this particular set of features that we're talking about here and now were directly rel related to customer feedback and use cases that were presented that would be much more helpful in the long run. So if you remember from version 23, if you were to use the power filter option, you would have a set of windows that would pop up here in the middle of the screen, almost muting everything in the background. It would actually lock the map itself. So you weren't able to click on any, uh, any of the topics any longer. So you lost a lot of access to the data while trying to render those filters. And we found that in, in those experiences, if you filtered incorrectly, it became a nuisance to have to go back into the power filter ribbon, make the updates and adjustments, whereas here they kind of act on the fly, right? So we can make these adjustments fairly quickly. We can remove the fact that we don't wanna see only Alex, but maybe we want to see the items modified by Nick, so on and so forth. And it, it happens in real time. And that's one of the biggest adjustments that I could say is uh, going to change the way that you're using that filterable content in your mind map. So another great experience there. Let's go ahead and jump into our task info environment. And let's go ahead and highlight this item. And we'll go ahead and add a start date and a due date. Now let's go ahead and push this out to the 24th. And here you will see that we have 10 work days until this item is due. So a very neat little addition. Obviously you can see the due date here, but I feel that having this hard number lets you see very, very quickly at a glance, oh wow, I've only got 10 days left. I better turn this into a top priority item. Maybe I need to go ahead and list that as the number one or assign that to someone, maybe make it an item that is already done, kind of tag it appropriately so that we can move on. Whatever the case may be, it helps to kind of guide you in that path toward being more efficient and finding more success within the Mind Manager experience. So now that we've walked through a few of these, let me take a look at our questions, see if we have anything relative to this example. If not, we'll carry on. So great question, Charles. Uh, everything that I'm covering today is available in version 24. What is yet to be defined for the roadmap of the Mac platform, uh, I could not speak to, but I definitely encourage you to 
pass that information on via the survey. Again, that material does go directly to our product development team. So if there are enough of those responses and those kinds of questions, uh, that will obviously bump that up the priority list. So again, great question, but I don't have a firm answer for you today. But thank you for attending. Uh, Crystal, uh, I will be using a navigational experience in an org chart during one of our examples today. It's not an actual org chart, though. I do want to be clear. It's not meant to identify um, the roles and responsibilities, but it will be formatted as an org chart. But the goal will be to track a project that will be coming in two, two slides, I believe. So uh, do stay, stay on the call for that. We will be using the org chart uh, layout, but it is not an org chart um, use case. So great question. And again, uh, I'm excited to cover that. Uh, Ethan, Power Bookmarks is exactly what I'm using to navigate through the different slides here. So I'm not using the slide mode. So you can see there's no deck that is a part of the map that I'm using today. This is all within the exact same mapping canvas. So if I zoom out here, you can see everything is actually all within the canvas itself. Uh, and again, that is because I need to leverage the ribbon to present some of the key functions and features, whereas slide deck mode is generally used in a full screen capacity. So kind of removing the ribbons, removing the side panels, things like that. So great question and thank you. Okay, uh, that looks like all we have. Oh no, we have one more. Uh, unfortunately, Jennifer, that's a great idea, but it's not possible yet. So uh, Jennifer's question was, can we have the topics uh, say that the work days are counting down and have it visible on the topic itself? Currently, it's only available within the task pane tab. But again, I'm, I'm just going to keep <laughs> ringing that bell. Uh, give us that feedback in the survey. That does go directly to our product development team. So I, I love the idea and I think it's an excellent option to have and it should be a fairly simple addition. So again, if we get enough of those kinds of requests, I'm, I do believe that our product team will go ahead and add that. Uh, so great question and thank you. All right, so in the interest of time again, let's go ahead and shift to our next slide where we'll be talking about some of those new features for project management and that collaborative experience based on the Mind Manager platform. Now, this one specifically is the Gantt chart being brought over to all of the other platforms outside of the desktop experiences. So if you are a user that has leveraged My Manager via web or even accessed it in a Teams capacity, or even if you've published or exported an HTML version of the map, you will have noticed up until today that you have lost that functionality to share that Gantt chart with others in a dynamic and meaningful way. Well, version 24 has made that a reality. So what I have here is an example. Uh, obviously, this is just an image here in the background, but the actual example topic has a paperclip icon of the HTML exported version. So keep in mind, that's only one that we're gonna talk about today, but it does couple as the same experience for the published map. So as we walk through this, I'll point out the differences here, uh, and then we'll go from there. Do keep in mind, I'm opening this file using the built-in browser of Mind Manager, but I don't need to. I only am doing this because obviously it allows me to showcase the fact that Mind Manager has a built-in browser with the divider that I'm now using to kind of separate the two panels, right? The actual map is here on the left, the exported file is here on the right. So I'm going to go ahead and open that up a little further, but I don't need Mind Manager to do this at all. This could be any browser, Chrome, Firefox, you know, you name it. Edge, any of the, the top browsers can open this particular HTML export. Now, the thing to keep in mind here is that this is a functional document, but not an editable document. So what do I mean by that? Well, we can filter against the material. So if we wanted to see our top priority items or if we wanted to identify things that were completed, uh, you know, those kinds of things are at our disposal. But if we want to actually change the material, pull a start date forward or push a due date outward, uh, those kinds of options are not um, available to us. So just keep that kind of thing in mind. But however, if we want to collapse down some of the segments, maybe we are only concerned with the items that are being handled by our development team, for example, uh, then of course we have that functionality. Now let's give you a little lay of the land. Here in the upper corner, you can start to identify the time scale that you want to look at this based on. So if we just want to see this 
broken out by months, everything will kind of get truncated, shrunk down a little bit, uh, that sort of thing. And then, of course, if we need to expand something back out, we can. The topics themselves will have their name appearing next to the bar. And then any of the resources that have been assigned to the topic will be in the parentheses off to the right. So it's, again, a great way to holistically see everything that's going on with your project. There is also a subsequent divider here in this space, uh, separate from the actual divider of Mind Manager, but a divider directly in the Gantt chart itself. That way, if you aren't really concerned with the start dates and due dates, but just want to see the overall timeline experience with the name of the topics, then you've got that view perspective as well. Keep in mind also uh, that the My Manager, the function that we're talking about for My Manager is ported over to all of the other experiences that My Manager has to offer. But this is not a standalone export. This is not just you exporting the Gantt chart by itself. That's something else that I want to make extremely clear. So if we go to the view angle down here at the bottom, and again, this is not in the Mind Manager software. This is in the browser experience. Uh, there is a view button down below where we can jump into things like our standard view, and that will take us into the project experience that I was just talking with uh, one of our our listeners about here is the org chart kind of breakout but again not in an org chart capacity uh, more of a project capacity here but again this is still filterable functional content if we just want to see things based on the number one priorities if we want to see just the items that we have completed whatever the case may be uh, this is still a completely functional experience even though we exported it as a gantt chart so keep that in mind. The view experience that you have active at that time will determine which way the document gets exported. So if I export it while the map is shown, it will start out for everyone that opens that file as a map version. And they will have to go down to view, trigger the Gantt view from here, and that's when they'll get all of the other material that we were discussing. And then, of course, that's the same for if you were leveraging a tag view in this example, based on location, same exact experience. So just keep that in mind. When you're working with new users, maybe the map is overwhelming. And if there's someone that's used to MS project, perhaps exporting the Gantt chart is a better segue for them to get familiar with the My Manager space. So I know that this has been a lot to cover. Let's take a look at some of these questions and continue from there. All right, so Lexi, uh, it looks like you are probably in the wrong place while trying to use the export feature. Uh, so let's go ahead and jump back in. So if I was working in the My Manager space, and again, this file doesn't have a project-based background, this is just an image, but you would be using the file and export option from here. And that would give you the option for the HTML5 interactive map. And again, if I was in the Gantt view while doing this export, then it would default to the Gantt view when someone opens that document. So that is a completely different experience than exporting the Gantt chart. So your question is more about how to export the Gantt chart for the use of an import, for example, into MS Project. So if I come to this screen, which is the Gantt Pro environment, you can see I have a separate window. There's another export option from here. Obviously, there's no Gantt material because I don't actually have a project in my slide deck. Uh, but again, this would be the only, <laughs> the only item, the example topic we had before. But this export is intended to be able to plug into a software like MS Project. So a different export experience. So again, great question, but you're looking in the wrong ribbon. So hopefully that is clarified. So you want to, again, use file, export from here, HTML5 interactive map. Great question and thank you. Which also lends itself to that discussion about the differences between HTML exports and published maps. So if we go back to our home ribbon here at the top of the screen, you can see that there is the publish option right here where it will allow me to start a new published document. So the canvas itself will function and look exactly the same as it just did when we were in the HTML exported version. So I'll go ahead and open that back up and continue my explanation from here. 
if I decided to publish the map, the only difference would be not the look and feel, not the functionality, but it would be the fact that the example that I have today would not be a static file. Meaning, if I made an adjustment to one of these topic items, maybe I changed the level of priority, maybe I increased the amount of task progress, whatever the case may be, I could then go to the publishing option and refresh my published data. That means anybody that has received the link to that published document would then obviously have the most up-to-date version of the content. Whereas the HTML5 export is exactly as it sounds. It is a one-time export, so everything is captured in that moment, but it cannot be updated or changed. So keep that in mind while making that decision. If it's a project that you have ongoing, Perhaps it's better to publish that material as a Gantt chart, share that version with your team via the link that they will receive. Either you can post it in a chat, send it in an email, whatever the case may be. And then from there, they could simply set a bookmark against that, click on it every time they need an update, filter through the info, kind of you know utilize the Gantt chart through all of its capabilities, and hopefully get the most out of that experience. And that is not a licensed function so they don't have to own mind manager to use that published document whatsoever not in the, the gantt chart mode not in the tag view nor in the standard mapping kind of org chart for the project that we were working on all of that is free of charge and does not require a license so a great question there let's go ahead and see if we have any others So we have a question here more about the project side of things. Uh, so I don't actually have a live project file active, uh, but in your question, you're basically asking about dependencies. Uh, ultimately, the dependencies between two items, and I'll go ahead and go ahead and start a brand new file just to explain this here very quickly. Let's go ahead and have a new open document. There we are. So if I identified all of these items and I include, let's say they all would begin on the exact same day, and uh, let's say they are all due today. So they start on the 2nd, end on the 10th. There we go. And you know what? Let's say that they all start on the 10th as well. So you can see that these two items say that they start on the 2nd, whereas this item starts on the 10th, wraps up on the 18th. Well, if I include dependencies, it will automatically update the start dates and due dates for all of these items. So let's go ahead and include a dependency between the two of these, finish to start. You can see that it immediately bumped this out to the 19th, and then it included this one out to the 27th because it already had a duration of nine workdays. So if I needed to reduce the duration, I could simply come over here. Maybe that's only gonna take one day, et cetera. Now it's going to wrap up on the 19th. And then of course, applying a dependency between these will mean that this will begin on the 20th with that original duration of nine workdays. So hopefully this makes more sense as far as what you were seeing in the project file over here in this example. But again, that was an HTML5 export, so I was not able to use that original file to actually represent any of the changes because again, it is an export. It is not a editable piece of content. But a great question nonetheless, and I did wanna make sure that we covered it. Uh, Douglas, um, please ask your question again. I'm not sure what you meant by does this work in macOS, which part? Could you just clarify that for me? And uh, I'll be happy to cover that. Ah, okay. Uh, so no, uh, please do keep in mind that this is the HTML version for the desktop for Windows. So when we're talking about this new Gantt export, uh, that is not available for the Mac side yet, but you will be able to use that Gantt experience in web and teams html5 and your published maps so again visible for windows v24 now if you just want to be able to export content into the original html versions using the standard map then yes that is available in mac but this particular gantt view experience that we're talking about today that's not yet been brought over to the mac side so i know that's a bit of a muddied answer but Ultimately, you can export to HTML5 from Mac, but not within the new Gantt view option. That is a Windows-based component. 
So great question, and thank you. Let's go ahead and jump into our next segment, and we'll talk a little bit more. Uh, I know that there were a couple of more questions there. I just again, in the interest of time, want to make sure that we have the ability to cover everything, and certainly we'll get back to that during Q and A. All right, so here we have the enhanced My Manager features. Now this is going to be specific for some of those users that have used items like properties tags, and some of the more advanced features of my manager, maybe even formulas, and uh, they're trying to calculate things like budget, uh, stuff like that. So let's go ahead and open this file, and now you will see we are in the editable experience of the map that we had a moment ago from our published versions. So let's go ahead and zoom in a little bit, and I'll give you a lay of the land. So here is our parent topic here at the top of the screen, the Project Zephyr experience by the Land Corporation. Each of these is a different department that is working on an initiative for the mobile application as well as getting it out there, tested, developed, designed, and then, of course, giving it to marketing and, and making it public to the world. So down below, you can see that there are elements that are uh, in bold. All of these represent the fact that they are a summarization of material that is coming from the lower level topics. So previously in the My Manager space, if you had some kind of a typo on one of these lower level items uh, and it was affecting several of your topics, you would have to change each of these individually one by one. And that has now been updated with the most recent release version 24. So if I wanted to change this name, let's say I don't like the term actual and I want to change it to cost, all I have to do is punch in the name here, click OK, and it will make the adjustment across my document in every place that the term actual was being leveraged. Now, equally impressive is the fact that it also updates the formulas that are a part of the kind of routing from bottom to top, giving us this summary here. So let's go ahead and highlight the term marketing, click on advanced, and now open the formulas for it. So it's telling us that our cost is going to be looking at the children cost, which is down below. And it's going to then give us the load amount for the cost divided by the budget. So keeping all of that in mind, that is how well we have redesigned that particular feature. For somebody that uses My Manager a lot, that was a big, big ask and something that we have wanted for a while. Because I'm telling you, building these examples and, and working all of this content out for these webinars, it takes a lot of time, but it, it gets, it gets uh, ex expanded upon when you find that there's a bug, a problem, or an issue, and you have to manually update each and every node. So a very, very big kudos to our product development team for pushing uh, this one as a top priority for this year's update. Uh, can't tell you guys how grateful we are on the sales engineering side of things. Very, very awesome feature. Now, we did have some questions just in general about leveraging the Gantt chart, so I will give a little bit more of a lay of the land here. Uh, some of the items that you have access to are things like the thumbnail images. We also have these tags listed on our topics. These are ways to kind of format the material so that you can have custom uh, custom naming conventions for certain things, and then you can group those together. So the example that you're looking at here is the location of the teams that are gonna be working on these specific aspects. There's also a sub task, uh, excuse me, a sub tag uh, below that that identifies the status of the, the item itself. So these are marked as done, whereas there are others that are in progress or still need to be done, uh, those kinds of things. So uh, another great document, again, this will be sent as a part of the wrap up today. So you'll have access to test this out, kind of reverse engineer it and use it on your own. So let's see if we have any questions here and we'll continue from there. So Christian, uh, you are spot on. Uh, in fact, the question that you have, and I'll go ahead and read it out here for the audience, uh, but ultimately Christian's goal is to have the ability to segment information level by level if he would like while trying to present his findings or his status to someone. So a quick example uh, would be that if you wanted to collapse all of these branches and just start out at a very high level, uh, you could do just that. So in this particular file, 
let's go say, let's go ahead and say I collapse all of this material and this is jumping ahead a bit but I do want to cover it because I think it's a very very interesting and, and useful experience especially since you've already seen me using the power bookmarks um, experience so far so if I push save here it's going to now create the bookmark called home <clears throat> so even if I expand everything out again, all I have to do now is trigger that home option and you can see it's now going to filter everything back down to the original state that I set as my, my starting point. So ultimately, Christian, if I wanted to, I could now uh, expand layer number two from here. I could then go into this ribbon, trigger the save option. It's gonna ask me, do I wanna overwrite home? No, I do not. And now it's gonna bring over a second pop-up window and I'm going to add another one, and I'm going to call that uh, step two, for example. And I'm going to include it in my sequence. So now I have step two being that this branch gets um, exposed. Go ahead and press OK there. So now let's say that we return back to home. Here is our home status. If I press next, it will then expand that topic for me. I can then walk everyone through it. Uh, but obviously that's pretty rudimentary. It could have been maybe you wanted to cover this item next, or maybe you had something that was nested under something and it was parked under six or seven levels and you didn't want to have to expand everything um, all the way down. You could then predefine what those looks uh, are going to be. And that is exactly how I have used the Power Bookmarks experience to prioritize today's content. So I know that we haven't reached that moment yet here in the presentation, but I felt like it was necessary because you've seen me using Power Bookmarks this entire time. So Christian, I think that you are spot on with your idea, and I think that Power Bookmarks will be one of your favorite new features. All right, let's go ahead and clear out a few of these other questions I've already answered to make sure. So Kevin has a question here. He wants to know if the Gantt view will be available on mobile platforms. So do keep in mind here, Kevin, the Gantt view itself is a publishable experience at this point. So what that means is if you had that published link, you could literally open it from your mobile device, whether it be a tablet or a smartphone, and you could essentially use that version directly there. Now, if you're asking, will we allow the Gantt chart to be editable on a mobile device? I don't see that coming anytime soon. It's just a lot of information to have on a, such a small screen. But if you want, obviously, feel free to share that feedback with us via the survey, and our product team will take a look at it. If there's a way that they can uh, make that work, I'm sure that they would. Ethan, thank you for the kind feedback. I will relay that to the product team. I am a big fan of the, the formula updates as well. Uh, Lexi, yes. Uh, so you have a question here about minimizing the amount of space between the topics themselves. So if we go into a brand new document, oh, you know what? I have one here at the bottom of the screen here. Uh, what you're referring to is the formatting of the topic. So if I right click here, trigger the format topic, uh, you're looking for things like the subtopic layout. So that is going to take you to the distance from the parents and the distance from the siblings. So you want to highlight the topic you're interested in, whether that be the central topic or a main topic. And then you want to identify the distance from the parents and the siblings under the subtopic layout option. Great question and thank you. All right, and again, in the interest of time, let's go ahead and jump back in. There we are, and we'll trigger next from here. There we go. Uh, so this is one of the sections that I will just spend a brief moment on explaining the adjustment that we made here, uh, because it's not exactly um, a big change that you have to learn if you already used my manager in the past for this particular use case. We've just simply separated the buttons out. So originally, Everything that you would do with Microsoft List was nested under the SharePoint option from here. So this was a much larger context menu, came down to about here, and you had to sift through. Now we have separated those out. So if you are trying to query a document list, that's when you would want to option yourself for SharePoint. But if you're actually trying to gather data and maybe do some kind of an import from a list that is in Microsoft, that's when you would do a query using this option. So again, a list, for maybe a series of tasks or something like that. But if you're looking for maybe a series of documents, 
then you could use SharePoint in this way. So just keep that in mind. Those are now two separate components. And at this point, I'm not going to demo it. We only have about 17, 16 minutes left. Uh, so I do want to make sure that we cover my manager apps as well as the Excel data mapper adjustments. So let's go ahead and open this example here. I've just clicked the paperclip for the Excel data mapper. So what it's going to do now is show us the original version of this Excel document. We will then jump into a brand new blank file and I'll explain some of the adjustments that we've made here. So you can see it's a traditional Excel file. We can see that it is a project where we have the title of the item that we're working on, a brief description of it. Then we have a category as far as a, um, you know, what we're going to be doing. Then we have the status the level of priority, start date, due date, and the resource that will be working on it. So what we have changed about this particular release for version 24 is essentially that the assigned to section will now be identified within the actual map as a resource. Previously, you needed to set a series of smart rules and kind of create workarounds so that the names in your list would become names within my manager resource category. So that's something that we've just made a lot more simple and a lot easier. Let's go ahead and jump into a blank map and I will give a brief demonstration of that. All right, so again, here on the right side of the screen, we have the original piece of content and here I will do the actual import now. So I'm opening the Excel data mapper option. It's gonna ask me to locate the file that I want to bring over. So that's gonna be in my examples folder. It's going to be advanced and it's going to be one of our integrations for the Excel data mapper. In that example, we were discussing a project. So I'll go ahead and select this one and I'll trigger OK. So on the next screen, it's going to identify that we're working with the exact same file that we need and we haven't selected something inappropriate. Uh, so we are good to go from here. Now, if we had a preset, we could simply apply that from here and it would then make all of the settings on the next screen appear for us automatically. But because I want to demonstrate this for you, I'm gonna skip the preset, but I do want you to know this is a great way for if you have something that you do regularly, maybe weekly or monthly, save it as a preset. That way you never have to change your import settings again. I'll go ahead and trigger next from here. And it has identified that we're gonna be looking at that top row for all of the key names. So that is accurate. We'll go ahead and leave that as is. And from here, we're now ready to begin. So I'm gonna apply a topic and I'm gonna say that this is gonna be our resource topic. And we'll go ahead and name this project. And we will go from here to a status view as well because you can have the same file imported more than once with two different perspectives. So let's say that I wanna separate everything out by resource. I can then first say that I want the name to be based on the assigned to column. Then I could say I want to see the status of that item broken out as a tag, for example, which is again another new feature. And maybe I want the start date to be listed not as a property, but actually as a start date. I want the due date to be listed as a due date as well. And I don't need levels two or levels three, for example. Let's go ahead and trigger apply and we'll have this all broken out. All right. So now we can see that items that belong to Alex Smith or Stephen Bashford are the first level of our content. We can have items by Jan Hager and other spaces and Christoph as well. But let's say that we wanted all of this information nested under one person's name, and then we wanted to be able to collapse that level all by itself. At that point, we would want to then add another level from here, list that as the person's name all by itself. Let's say we need to shift that up so that it becomes level number one. And now level number two would be something like the title of what we're going to be doing. Maybe we also want to capture in the notes the longer description of what needs to be done. Now let's reapply this by highlighting the resource topic again, make a change to our application, and then everything will be nested under the name Alex Smith or Jan Hager and so on and so forth. That way, if we are only concerned with what belongs to us and our name is Steven, we can simply expand that branch, see exactly what we're gonna be working on. If we need to dive deeper into the instructions, we can see that from here, or we can actually just simply click the note and that will open for us as well. So keep in mind again, those kinds of updates are making a, a lot easier to apply tags to your topics. So all of this is now filterable content and a lot more accessible to you in the long run. 
Uh, again, in the interest of time, I won't be taking any additional questions here as a part of the example, because I do want to be able to scroll down once more and talk a bit about the My Manager apps experience. So this is a new, completely brand new experience for My Manager, and it is one of the coolest features that I've ever seen since I have worked here. This is intended to become a custom experience for you to kind of develop examples that you use, templates, industry-specific items that you need on a regular basis. One such example is creating onboarding experiences and, and documentation for those that join your organization. It operates in two different modes. One is a licensed mode that you have to pay for. The other is not. So to be a user, it is totally free. It's included with My Manager 24. But if you wanted to be a developer and actually come up with um, actual ribbons and things of that nature, that does require a license. And it has its own um, license key that you would unlock a ribbon that would allow you to actually establish things like what I'll show you now. So you can see here at the top of the screen, I have this item called shortcuts. This is something that I was able to build with a developer license, and it houses several of the files that I use when I talk to customers on a regular basis. So things like a how-to, a service request, a new hire onboarding example, different kinds of diagrams for a relationship outlining, and of course, admin portal kinds of material, cloud storage documents, uh, and all of the other things that I need at my fingertips very, very quickly, I was able to build an entire ribbon customized to exactly those, those questions that have come up most frequently because of the new uh, My Manager apps experience brought to you by Harport Consulting. Now, in order to add an app, you can go to the My Manager website, trigger the Get App More Info option, go ahead and download it from there. And the awesome part is you don't actually have to be an administrator to apply any of these um, adjustments because they are already a part of the software. They are actual mind maps that are providing all of the coding to make this happen. So you have all of the rights that you need in order to apply the adjustments and the changes directly to your system. Let's go ahead and jump down. And of course, I'm only gonna be scratching the surface here today, but we do have a full-fledged webinar on this scheduled for November 19th. It will be 7 a.m. PST and 4 p.m. CET. So just keep that in mind. So some of the examples that I'll cover are going to be, well, Power Bookmarks, <laughs> you have had a crash course in that already, but I did want to talk about the layout tools experience. I think this is extremely important. Uh, it's a great way to kind of adjust all of the structures and of course this is another one of those how-to documents that i wanted to include here in today's discussion but as you can see we have four different shapes within our diagram here if we wanted these to be cleaned up and kind of utilized especially for giving presentations creating slide decks whatever the case may be um, it used to be very cumbersome and it was very manual in that you had to align everything and kind of format it all correctly and allow the appropriate amount of spacing between all these elements so now with the layout tools model it's a lot easier so you can see i've just done a quick rubber band to highlight all of these items as i trigger the format from the top of the screen I have my layout tools right here. So now I can decide how I want to stack these objects. Let's say that I want to stack these horizontally with an object spacing of five millimeters. Uh, we had a question just a moment ago about spacing our topics and subtopics, but this one is about spacing objects. So I'll go ahead and trigger OK now. And you can see that it is now spaced everything out. We have no topics overlapping any, any of the others anymore. And now if we want to align these, let's say to the bottom, for example, it will bring everything down to the bottom with a five millimeter gap between. And now it looks more like a bar graph than just jumbled shapes. So I can't say enough great things about the layout tools experience. It's definitely helped us create better looking presentations better aligned material, uh, that sort of thing. So again, another another big kudos to Harper Consulting for all of the adjustments and enhancements that My Manager Apps is helping us to establish. So let's go ahead and note here at the bottom of the screen, if you have questions on this, again, there is a full-fledged webinar, but in the interim, if you do have questions, feel free to reach out to us at professional.services at mymanager.com. We can help you get information on developer licensing, pricing, details along those lines, and of course, how to, right? We will certainly guide you um, along the way. So again, 
thank you all for your time and attention. We have officially reached the Q&A, so I'm going to take a moment to uh, dive through some of the questions that we did miss uh, along the way, but I wanted to make sure that we covered the layout tools before we did anything further. All right, our first question is from Kevin. He's asking, uh, within the Power Bookmarks experience, is the view angle, as far as zoom and where the screen is position, positioned, captured as a part of the bookmark? And the answer is absolutely. That's how I'm able to literally trigger that view button right there, click next, and have everything kind of resonated right there in the center of the screen, right? So as I make the bookmark, that is what you should expect to see. So again, if I had an item collapsed, for example, and I saved the bookmark that way, if I had something maybe positioned off center, all of that would matter. So you definitely wanna make sure it's exactly the way that you want it before you save the bookmark. And then of course, if you do mess up, you can certainly resave it and overwrite uh, the, previous, uh, the previous bookmark. So great question, Kevin, and thank you for attending today. Let's see what else we have. All right, so Christian, uh, absolutely. So his question is, are there integrations that allow me to build maps from a SharePoint list? So that goes back to our original discussion here from the advanced ribbon. If you have a Microsoft list and you want that to become a series of topics within a map, you can certainly run a query. All you have to do is trigger this option here, query a Microsoft list. It will then, of course, confirm all of your credentials, make sure you are connected to the correct sites, but you will essentially be able to configure that query here in this window. I am not connected as you see, uh, but you will be able to configure that query here in this window, have the, all of those, um, those adjustments applied, and it is a 360 degree experience, meaning if I update something connected to a SharePoint list, or Microsoft list, I should say, if I update it in my mind map, it will push the updates into the Microsoft list and vice versa. If I'm in a Microsoft list and I make an adjustment, it will push it back into my map. So keep that in mind. Great question. Let's see what else we have to cover. Alrighty, so we have a question from Jennifer. On the, some of your examples today, you have represented the percentage of complete with the green check marks and the circles like a pie, pie diagram. Can that be converted to numbers? Uh, the answer is yes. So it does require advanced functionality called smart rules, but ultimately you can trigger rules that will um, mirror things and apply properties. So the quick example would be the trigger would be the task progress, and then you would want it to have with it a property. Uh, let's say, oh, well, I don't have any properties on this topic, <laughs> duh. Uh, so I don't have any topics in this particular example, but if I did, the word properties would show up here on this selection screen, and then I could trigger that the, I, I could trigger that the task progress indicate a priority, a, a property down below here. So again, not really the focus of this webinar, so don't have the ability to truly demonstrate it, but the answer is yes. All righty, and continuing on, let's see what else we have. <laughs> Christian, power bookmarks for the win. I agree 100%. It's a wonderful, wonderful feature. Oh, all right, so Lexi has another question here about, uh, and, oh, uh, looks like I may have, okay, I've already covered that one for her. Okay, good. For the Excel mapper, is there a way to import Excel and have the task info define the task info progress automatically? Zero to 100%. Ah, so Greg, great question. In that example that I just provided, you would have to do similarly to what Lexi was just asking, take a smart rule that identifies the column based on the progress marker. So if it's 90%, for example, and you want that to turn into a, a figure that is a property, then yes, you could take that figure directly from that column, plug it in, have that rule translated into a, a diagram like the 
100% complete icon, the 90% complete icon, you name it. So yes, but it does require a smart rule. Great question. Uh, Jeff, I see your question here about how to receive your upgrade to version 24. Uh, that is all handled by our marketing department and they should have emailed you instructions on how to establish your new version. Uh, we have a question from Dino that asks, what are workbooks? He must have noticed that on this page here. So workbooks are going to be from the flipbook section on the view tab. Ultimately, it is a way to create a two-sided map, meaning that if I click the workbook dropdown, it will allow me to flip between two different versions of the map. One version could be the, the side that we are doing our active working on, right? Our tracking of tasks, our communicating as a team. The other could be a document that is capturing things that we learned through that process that we need to then pass on to another department as they maybe take the ball and run with it. Uh, so kind of a, a space to have a separate bit of content that is not directly relative to the map, but it is, of course, beneficial and helpful. So it's a two-sided map in that experience. Great question. All righty. And let's see here. What are, oh no, we covered that one. Okay. Awesome question, Jennifer. So the example that I gave a moment ago, and I know we are at time, everyone. Uh, so if you do have to drop, I certainly understand. Uh, I will only answer a few more questions and anyone that I did not get to over the call today, I will certainly email you responses and answers. So Jennifer, great question. The mind manager example that I gave on Excel Data Mapper is a one-to-one -one push of the material. So if I update the content in mind manager, it has nothing to do with the file in Excel because I have already imported it into my manager. I'm essentially taking the ball and rolling with it forward from that point. Now, if you are interested in a two-way syncing of information, that is a different experience, but it is not a mapping experience. And I wanna try to explain that as best I can. So there are two Excel functions. There's the Excel data mapper, as well as the Excel range. The Excel range is actually a series of cells, right? So a, a group of, of columns and rows that can be brought over into the My Manager space. And it would literally just look like a portion of Excel on a topic, right? So it's just superimposed onto it. Now, in that experience, if I update the Excel document, it will update inside of my map. But because the Excel data mapper is a one-time import, I will have to essentially re-import that material. Now, the cool part is I don't have to manually do that. It is set to auto-renew the, the material each and every time you reload the Mind Manager map. So it will automatically look at that Excel document, pull in the latest data, but it will not allow you to push data from Mind Manager into your Excel document. Hopefully that makes sense. Uh, yes, uh, I couldn't agree with you more there, Greg. It is a ton of material as far as things that we've updated. Uh, ultimately, this is just the tip of the iceberg. Like I said, there is a full webinar on November 19th that will cover the App Studio webinar experience in more depth. Uh, again, my goal today was kind of show and tell. Uh, and of course, I did that with the Power Bookmark space here, uh, pretty drastically using it for the entire presentation. Unfortunately, Christian, the power bookmarks are not. Uh, so that is a function of the desktop component only. So you would need to be using Windows desktop to leverage power bookmarks in the way that I am today. Great question. Wow, there, there are still tons of questions, everyone, and I do apologize. Uh, we are just at time. So again, I will be reaching out to everyone via email, and it has been an absolute pleasure presenting to you today. Uh, my name is Alex Smith, and uh, as I close out our webinar today, I do want to point out that, again, we hope that you do respond to us via the survey. Tell us what you thought about today's webinar. Tell us what you think about the new features, of course, and if there's something that you hope to see in the future, feel free to pass that on as well. We do have the entire calendar of everything that we have published up until today. All of that material is uh, 
available for you. The files are there to be downloaded. Uh, all of the other webinars and material are at your fingertips. We also have the Starter Academy, which is that five part tutorial space on using Maya Manager from a very, very early stage all the way through the advanced material. So again, loads and loads of content for you to, uh, to take a look at but feel free to reach out to me personally if you do have any additional follow-up questions. And as I said before, I will certainly be emailing those that I was not able to connect with today live on the call. Thank you all for your time and attention, and I hope that you enjoy version 24. Take care.